Good morning, boys and girls. It's a beautiful day. I pray that you're having a great day. And we have a new word. It's obey. O-B-E-Y. Obey. Remember we learned about the Ten Commandments and they were supposed to obey what God said, the first four with God, the last six with people. Well, we're going to learn about somebody that didn't obey and what happened. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you that you give us instructions. And Lord, help us to learn from this lesson what happens when we don't obey. Be with these boys and girls and just bless them as they listen to this lesson. In your precious son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And we are going to be talking. We're going to be talking about Samson and the stories in the Old Testament and the book of Judges. Okay? And Israelite again, Israel, the Israelites, were not obeying God again. They were doing evil instead of good, not doing what they're supposed to, to obey God and only worship God. They started worshiping idols. Remember, that's what is made by men. If it's made by men, you don't worship it. There's only one true God. He created us. And if we create it, it's not God, okay? So they had not been, not all of them were bad, but the majority had. And I'm sure the ones that were good and wanted to follow God were crying, Oh, Lord, help us, help us, please help us. Deliver us from the evil that we have been doing. And you know what? God never gave up on them. He always had mercy and love and grace for them. So God sends an angel to this woman and he tells her, you're going to have a son. And there's some rules he has to obey. And you have to raise him and teach him these rules. Okay? He cannot eat grapes. He cannot drink wine. He can't touch anything that's dead. And he can never, never, never cut his hair. Never. Okay? So she comes pregnant with a son. And she names him Sansom. And she raises him and teaches him what God has said. You are a special child, okay? And these are the things you cannot do. And God is going to make you strong in God's power. So here he is. And guess what? He becomes stronger and stronger as his hair gets longer and longer. Oh, he gets so strong. His hair gets so long, he has seven braids because it's so thick and long. Now, he is very strong. But he's not wise. Because what does the Bible tell us? Let's do our Bible verse from Matthew 22, verses 37 and 38. Are you ready? Love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. But the part I want you to remember is love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. And that also was taught in the Old Testament. But you know what? Samson started thinking about himself. Oh, I'm so strong. He forgot to give God the credit who gave him the strength. And he becomes stronger and stronger. Oh, but he just was not wise. He was so strong. He was able to kill a lion with his bare hands. <gasps> I'm going to show you another picture of how he was able to pick up that line. Look at that. Okay, I'm making sure you can see it. And just throw him down. He was strong, but he was not wise. You know, you can be strong, but if you don't obey God, it's not going to do you any good. So don't forget, that's our word. Obey. O-B-E-Y. So, the Philistines lived near the Israelites. And they were mean to him, and they bothered them all the time. Just wouldn't leave him alone. And when Samson got stronger, he could fight him by himself because he was that strong. But there was one rule he was to obey. All the Israelites were to obey. Do not take the Philistine women as your wives. Do not date them. Nothing. Well, he saw one Philistine woman, and he married her, and that caused a lot of problems, okay? Why? Because he did not obey God. And it caused a lot of problems. And when you get older, you'll read more about that story. And he was just 
Oh, I'm so strong. Look, he could beat up all the Philistines by himself. So he's thinking, I can do anything I want to. He had such bad judgment when it came to women. He did not do what was right. And on their city, where the Philistines were, they had these huge, huge, heavy, heavy, heavy gates. And you know, it took a lot of men, and they had to pull it up. Those, those gates were heavy. People couldn't even break into them. And guess what? Samson went up and just ripped off one gate and was able to carry it himself. You see, he is so strong, but he's not wise. And they're scared of him because every time they try to fight him, they lose. See, Samson, if he hadn't had such bad judgment when it comes to women, he would have been doing what was right and obeying God and helping his people more. Because when he was doing right and protecting them, the Philistines couldn't bother the Israelites. So he meets another Philistine woman. See, he's keeping his eyes where he shouldn't be. And I'm sorry, I got a cough. <coughs> Allergies, I'm sorry. Her name is Delilah. And he just falls in love with her. And what did God say? Do not date or marry the Philistine women. So he sees her and he wants to be near her. And the Philistine army realizes that. So they go to Delilah and said, hey, we need to know what makes him so strong. Because remember, they don't recognize the true God. They worship idols. They said, we'll pay you a lot of money if you find out what makes him so strong. Of course, she loved that money idea. So she said, I'll do it. So here she is talking to him and asking him, what makes you so strong? And see, they're looking in, and he knows God said, don't ever tell anybody what makes you strong, which is his hair. His mother taught him everything God, the angel had told her. She taught him. He knew better, but he wasn't obeying, was he? So he told her one time, tie up my hands and my feet. Oh, and I won't be able to fight. So they come in. She does it while he's sleeping, and they come in. And they go to take him, and he breaks those strings loose, the ropes and everything, and he beats them up. And she gets upset. You lied to me. You didn't tell me the truth. So a few more times he tells her other things that will make him weak. And same thing, when he goes to sleep, she does whatever he says. And the Philistine army comes in there to take him, and he just beats them up. So she goes in there. You don't love me. You won't tell me the truth. Ah. Oh. You know he should have known how many times he had told her what would make him strong, and she tricked him while he was sleeping. That's why I said he did. He wasn't wise. He wasn't using his mind. He wasn't giving his heart to God or his whole soul. He was only thinking about himself, and he kept thinking, I'm so strong. You see, he forgot where his strength came from. It came from God, and he was thinking, I'm so strong. I don't have to worry about anything. Well, she keeps bothering him and crying, and why won't you tell me? So he finally does tell her something he was never to do. If you cut off my hair, my strength is gone. So he goes to sleep. I just can't believe he did it, but he did. Here it is. And guess what she's doing? You see that? She's cutting off his hair. That's his strength, remember? God, because that was showing obedience to God is what it is. It wasn't that the hair was making him strong. God said, to be faithful to me, you have to keep that hair and your strength will come from that. But the strength came from God. But he disobeyed God and told. Here's another picture of it. I'm going to show you one more after this. And they're cutting. And she's, she's smiling because she knows she's fixing to get some money. And that shows how big and strong he was, okay? Instead of your little book. And then this one just shows the, your little book, your age. But they're cutting off his hair. Well, guess what? The Philistine army's there, and they wake him up. And he gets up to go fight him, and he has no strength. No strength at all. He can't even fight one. And you know what? They tie him up, and they blinded him. They put his eyesight out where he could never see again. Oh, this didn't have to happen to him if he had obeyed God. But he didn't. 
He kept looking at what he wanted, not what God was telling him to do. So they get him to prison. And I don't know if you've ever seen it. I saw it as a child. I don't know if you can still see it. But they used to take donkeys and put a harness on them, and it was connected to this long pole. And the donkey would walk around and around. And in the middle would be this thing where they put the sugar cane, and that thing would come down and press that sugar cane, and that syrupy sugar would come out, and they'd make syrup. Okay? Well, back then, that's how they ground the wheat so they could make bread. And it, it was always a prisoner that had to be hooked up if they didn't have a donkey. So they hook him up because you got to remember, he can't see anymore and he's weak. And day after day, he's just walking around. God had given him so much and he did exactly what God said not to do. Don't look at those Philistine women. Don't date them and don't marry them. And he did exactly what God said not to do. And he's suffering. But you know who else is suffering? The people in Israel. Because now they have no protector because he, he didn't do what God said to do. So they're going to have this big celebration to worship their fake God, which isn't an idol. And they're going to make fun of Samson. But guess what's happening? Day after day, he's walking around and his hair starts growing. God had not forgotten him. He never forgets us. God still loved him, had grace and mercy for him. Even though he made mistakes, sin, that's what it is. So by the time they get them to attach them to the poles, it's big columns. You can't even move them. And they're not worried. They got him chained to one column and one to another. And these are big columns. And they're making fun of them. And you know what? Samson prayed. God, please, please just get, make me strong once more. And let me bring this temple down on this fake God and all these Philistines. Now, he knows he's going to die, too, because when it comes crashing down, he's there. But he realized how he had let God down. He had let the Israelites down. And he was ready to give his life to finally do what God said. So guess what? He starts pushing those columns. And it starts shaking. And, you know, the people there laughing, having a good time, making fun of him. And all of a sudden, they feel things shaking. And he's moving those columns. And these are not little columns. I mean, they're big around, the concrete, not easy to move. All of a sudden, it comes crashing down, the whole temple. Because they're inside their temple for their God. And it kills Samson, but it kills so many Philistines too. Let me show you. Here he is when he first starts pushing. But I'm going to show you a picture that shows how big they are. See, he'd gotten weak, but his hair had gone long again. And God gave him that strength again. He asked God, please help me one more time. Yes, he died. But he knew he was right with God to do what God had tended him to do was remove these people. They were evil people. They were mean people. And to protect his people, the Israelites. You know, the thing is, it didn't have to end that way. It didn't have to happen that way. If he had obeyed, let's spell our word, O-B-E-Y. If he had obeyed, oh, he could have kept his people safe. He would not have lost his eyesight. If he had looked at the women that were Israelites and they worshiped the one true God, God would have just kept blessing them and blessing them. And the lesson of this young children is when your parents tell you that it's wrong, you need to listen. Let your ears hear what they're saying because they're trying to protect them. They're trying to protect you. That's what I meant to say. The thing is, Samson's mother had trained him. She taught him, God said, you can't eat grapes, you can't drink wine, you can't touch anything that's already dead. You cannot cut your hair. And he was not to let anybody know that the strength was in the hair. And all it was, it wasn't the hair, it was showing God, I'm going to keep my hair long because you told me to. Just like the Ten Commandments, it says, honor your mother and father. Obey them. That's what it means, honor. Obey your mother and father. And that's what it was all about was not that his hair, it was that he was obeying God. 
And when he was walking around that thing blind, he started realizing how he'd let God down. How he thought of his strength as his strength when it was God's strength. Young people, when you're given rules to live by, or your parents tell you something, or your grandparents, or what you learn in Sunday school, it's for your best. See, if he had listened, and he had been listening with his ears, and letting the word of God sink in his heart, love God with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his mind, it didn't have to be this way. But he disobeyed. So I want you to think all week, Okay, when my mom and dad tells me something, they love me. They're trying to help me. They don't want bad things to happen to me. Okay? So you be happy. And every day, this is your only project. It's an easy one. Very easy. Every day, go to God and say, I thank you for my parents. Thank you, God, that you love me and help me to obey. Okay? Thank you for my parents. Help me to obey. Help me to listen. Just obey. I want you to say, God, help me to obey. Help me to obey you, God, and obey my parents. Just think about that word, obey. And thank God for your parents, that they love you and care about you and want to keep you safe. Okay? So just thank God for your parents and listen to what they're saying. And thank God for that. He loves you so much. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lesson about not obeying. Oh God, we don't want to be guilty of that. Be with these boys and girls and help them have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful week. We love you, Lord, and we want to obey. In your precious Son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And I do pray that you have a good week. And I pray that you like this lesson in the new word. We're going to do it for May. Okay? And just, just know you're loved. I love you, but God loves you. Your parents love you, your brothers, sisters, your aunts and uncles, your grandparents. You are loved. Bye.